What is good everybody and welcome back to another My Dad Toys video. Today we have the 2018 Royal Rumble review. I'm going to take you guys all the way through the card, starting off with the US Open Challenge with Bobby Roode, going all the way through to the main event of the Women's Royal Rumble and every single thing that happened on the card. We're not going to cover the pre-show, um, just in short real quick, the Masked Men won and then the Revival also came up big with a win over the club. So that is pretty much it for the pre-show, but... I'm going to cover everything that ticked me off on the show. I'm also going to cover everything that I liked about it. You know, I thought it was a pretty solid uh, match card overall. I thought some of the matches lived up to the hype. A lot of them um, did way better than I expected. And um, particularly one that I was pretty worried about that they actually showed up. So I'm very excited for that. However, there are some really big things that I was bummed about, but we will cover every single thing, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, guys, I just want to point out that what the heck was Alundra Blaze doing on the kickoff panel? She seemed a little bit drunk. It was just really weird. Her and JBL interacting, I just don't think they need to bring people in just randomly, because you never know what they're going to say. Her and Ric Flair were all over the place, and I just wanted to put that in there. I think they need to get some people that actually are analysts, or some people backstage to get in there, or actually maybe some superstars, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. I thought she was a little bit um, out of touch. I don't really know. Starting things off, guys, we had the U.S. Open Challenge with Bobby Roode, and I thought this was pretty pointless. Um, I guess the only reason they did this was to give Bobby Roode some shine on pay-per-view. And, of course, a lot of people thought that Dolph Ziggler was going to answer the challenge, and I was going to be really freaking pissed off if he, if he was going to answer that challenge. But, of course, I was right. I thought it would be one of two men. I thought it would be Jinder or this man right here, Mojo Riley. He did answer the thing, and um, I thought Bobby Roode was looking good in his glorious gray and blue wrestling gear. He was looking really nice. Match was your typical SmackDown Live match. Didn't have a good finish. The glorious DDT looked kind of botched. I think it was Mojo's fault. Bobby ended up retaining. I did agree with this. Uh, however, I think this was just a ploy to get Bobby Roode on the show. The first official match we had, guys, was the 2-on-1 handicap match for the WWE Championship between AJ Styles taking on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. AJ came out in this sick AF beautiful gear that Carolina Blue and Black and Silver just looks so nice together. I was actually going to work on a custom with Carolina Blue in it, but now I feel like people are going to be like, you copy dude, you get a here from Royal Rumble. So now I'm kind of bummed out about that, but I'll probably make it anyway, because F it. But um, I like the way the match started. It was kind of slow at first, but Zayn and KO with their heel antics and, you know, tagging back and forth really built up the hype for this match. Uh, Kevin Owens going around AJ Styles I thought was hilarious, just proving uh, you know, again and again, why Kevin Owens is one of the best in the world at what he does, just always knowing what to do in certain situations. Um, a really cool moment in the match was AJ Styles was in the corner. Kevin Owens, like, used his momentum to launch him across the ring. And in that moment, he caught Sammy in a Hurricane Rana. So it was like he caught him in the legs and flipped him over. It was a really, really cool spot. Um, also, another spot is where AJ was on the apron. He got hit with a super kick because the ref was distracted. Uh, and then it sent him into a blue thunder bomb, which I thought was awesome. AJ was freaking smashing Sami Zayn with those freaking forearm shots, man. I really like that. You could hear the thud every single time. Um, the end of the match came when the ref thought that Zayn tagged KO. Um, Zayn got thrown out of the ring. KO goes for a pop-up powerbomb into a sick roll-up from AJ. And AJ ends up retaining the championship. Um, sort of a, you know, confusing finish there, and I think they're going to continue this rivalry. Not sure exactly where it's going to go from here, but I definitely will see Sammy and KO causing more um, problems on SmackDown Live, I'm sure, for uh, Shane McMahon. After this, um, I thought that it was um, a pretty good match overall. I liked the match a lot. It was a great way to open it. Three of the best workers in the company, hands down. KO and Sammy were backstage after the match with Shane McMahon, you know, begging for a review of the tape. Ke Kevin Owens doesn't want to be screwed by another ref. Um, he asked Shane if he saw it, and he just simply replied, yep, obviously referring to the yep move it. Um, leaving it on a cliff right there. I thought this was a great way to open the show, but AJ did retain. Up next, we had the SmackDown Live Tag Team title match between the Bingeables taking on the Usos in the two out of three falls match. You know, the Usos came out in their fresh white freaking attires, looking nice. You know, the story was built around the left leg of Jimmy Uso. Bingeables working the leg for the first portion of the match. They had a sick suicide dive by Jey Uso to get some momentum back. Moonsault onto Jay and Jimmy to the outside from Chad Gable was a really nice spot from this match. It took forever to get the first fall. I thought that was a really nice um, way to do it. I thought that this match was going to go on for like 30 or 45 minutes, guys. They were, you know, going hard at it. They were working so hard. Both teams working so hard to get that first fall, and I absolutely love that. 
Um, at one point, the Usos were on the corners. Shelton kicks one of their faces off. He jumps up on the uh, turnbuckle, kicks their head off. I love that. Um, then we had a very nice super, uh, super kick sequence by the Usos. Then a double super kick to Gable in the face, getting the first fall to make the Usos up one to nothing. There was a sick double move by the Bingeables. Um, it looked like Jimmy like hit his head on the floor uh, at one point when they did the double moves to the outside. I thought for sure he was like out or something. He looked really terrible. It looked like it bounced right off the mat. So that looked pretty nasty. But then the um, finish came when uh, the Uso, one of the Usos, I think it was Jay, rolled up Benjamin. Chad Gable's on the turnbuckle. I thought Chad Gable was going to jump off onto the Usos to, you know, break up the pin. He did not, and they just win 2-0 with a roll-up. And I thought the match was incredible up to that point. Um, I was really let down by the finish of that match. I don't know if their time got cut or what the... Um, the issue was, but that is what happened. The Usos did retain, which I'm okay with. I just did not like to finish that match. They couldn't even give Gable and Benjamin at least one pinfall to give them some credibility. I thought they were doing a good job on SmackDown Live of building up some. And then I feel like this really takes away their momentum. Getting beat 2-0. They didn't even get a pinfall. And they lost on a roll-up. I just thought that was pretty crap. But um, I liked this match a lot until the finish. And the Usos did retain. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Men's Royal Rumble match. And I'm going to be honest with you, this totally caught me by surprise. I was pretty pissed off at first. I was, you know, thinking, this the winner of this match gets a main event WrestleMania match for the championship. I don't get how any other match is bigger than this. Uh, I, it, I don't know. It just blew my mind. I thought that that was a tradition. I thought that the main event had to be the Royal Rumble. Apparently, I was wrong. I thought that the Universal Championship was going to go last after that. But I was wrong on that as well, and we will get to that in just a few moments. But starting out the Royal Rumble, guys, we had Rusev Day coming to the ring first. Aiden English comes out, makes a prominent entrance for Rusev. You know, big pop. Everyone is loving Rusev. Rusev Day is totally over. Freaking Rusev getting hella pops, hella freaking chance. It was a very nice thing to see. And then, to my surprise, out walks number two. The number two entrant was none other than Finn Balor. I really liked this. I love that they gave him this spot. Um, his role throughout this entire Rumble was the Iron Man. You know, he worked really, really hard throughout the entire thing. And I think that his gear was sick. He was rocking like this Deadpool colorway. It had like... Uh, red and black but it wasn't like a bright red it was like a dull darkish red not like his nxt red it was looking really nice i really like this attire had bc on it and everything um you know they go at it for a few minutes um then out comes number three we had rhino and i think this was just to get that cheap pop you know to get that ecw pop they were chanting ecw in the crowd so that is probably the reasoning behind this um, they went out for a uh, few minutes as well. I thought for sure that uh, Rhino would probably be cleaned up pretty quickly, but he did not get uh, put out as fast as I thought he would. Then out came at number four was Trash Corbin, and he was looking strong at first, you know, taking out everybody. And then the best thing in the world that could have happened, Finn Balor eliminates Trash Corbin. Corbin goes to the outside. He lays out Finn Balor and Rusev together. And that was pretty much that. You know, he takes him out. And then number five is announced. Number five walks down the ramp. And it is none other than Heath Slater. So Heath Slater comes out on the stage. And um, Baron Corbin freaking close signs the piss out of him. Because he's eliminated. So he's pissed off and stuff. So Baron Corbin lay waste. He's all down. So everybody's down. And then the buzzer hits. And out comes Elias Sampson. Elias Sampson, and you know, he's playing his guitar and stuff, and he plays his guitar for a little while. And then out comes our first surprise of the night, number seven. It was the NXT champion himself, Cian Almas, makes his way to the ring, and he had a great showing. I think that Cian Almas really balled out, really looked nice, really represented uh, NXT the way I think that it should. And um, I forgot to comment on it, but. Um, Slater was wearing like some Benoit looking tights. He had red tights on and they had like these rips in it that really looked like Chris Benoit's tights. Obviously not exactly, but it was, um, it was very Benoit-like. It had the Benoit touches to it. Then, of course, came out the ever so boring Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt did come in strong though. He was looking strong to start off his thing. Crowd was losing it for Rusev Day. Chanting the piss out of Rusev Day. Just could not give up on Rusev Day. Number nine comes out, and we got Big E. Big E comes out to the ring, and he is uh, feeding pancakes to Heath Slater. And that was a pretty funny moment in the uh, the ring there. 
Um, out comes number 10, and number 10 was, of course, Ty Dillinger. However, as Ty Dillinger's music hits, he is not approaching the ring. So as he's not approaching the ring, a camera goes to the backstage, and who do you know? It is Kevin Owens and Ty Dillinger just beating the stew out of him, and we got figures falling everywhere. But um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens lay waste to Ty Dillinger, and I think Kevin Owens was going to take his spot, and then, you know, Sami's like, no, bro, I got it. So that is what happened there. So Sami Zayn makes his way to the ring for the number 10 spot, which I thought was pretty weird. It kind of looked like Kevin Owens had a grimace on his face there, so he was probably, you know, pissed off. I don't know if that's going to build to something later on. The buzzer goes off, and number 11 is Sheamus. Sheamus comes down to the ring, but he is quickly eliminated by Heath Slater. Very, very crazy. And then immediately after that, Bray Wyatt eliminates Slater. So um, we had Sheamus for a second, and then he got popped out by Heath Slater, and then Bray Wyatt eliminated Heath Slater. Number 12 hits, and we got Xavier Woods. So now we have two members of New Day in the ring, and they are helping each other out a lot. They are, you know, double teaming and all that good jazz. Apollo comes in next at number 13. And um, I think that his role in this matchup was pretty nothing. He didn't do anything of big, um, anything big. At number 14 comes a very strong contender, the first possible winner. No, actually, it's the second possible winner. The first possible winner was probably Finn Balor. But out comes Shinsuke Nakamura, and he quickly lays waste to Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn is eliminated and then we had um number 15 came to the ring and it was cesaro he comes out he does not have his tag team partner with him so cesaro comes to the ring and he is all by his lonesome had a way better showing than his tag team partner by the way so cesaro comes to the ring he almost eliminates finn cn comes to his aid and then number 16 comes out and it is none other than Kofi Kingston. So we have the entire New Day in the match now. Number 17 rolls around, and it is um, Jinder Mahal. But before that happens, I believe that Cesaro went ahead and eliminated Xavier Woods. No, actually, he eliminated Apollo Crews. So Apollo Crews is eliminated by Cesaro. And then Jinder Mahal comes down and eliminates Xavier Woods. So Jinder Mahal is getting all kinds of heat. And then he continues that and eliminates Big E. And then Seth Rollins makes his way to the ring. And Seth Rollins was wearing these just, oh my goodness, guys. He was wearing this just horrendous um, pair of pants. He was wearing these tights that had like flames on them. And they looked like a freaking creator wrestler on 2K. They did not look very good. I think it would have looked a lot better if they were like airbrushed, like real flames on there. But um, then we had some... Then we had a crazy moment. We had Xavier Woods saving Kofi Kingston by catching his other foot when Jinder threw him out. He stand on some pancakes that I believe Big E brought to the ring. Xavier and Big E launch Kofi over Mahal, and then Kofi eliminates Jinder Mahal. Big pop there. You know, Kofi had to have the big save spot, so that is what they did for that. CN then goes ahead and eliminates Kofi Kingston, so now the whole entire New Day is gone, and we are left with um, just a few people in the ring there since the start. The music does hit, though, and we have uh, Matt Hardy coming to the ring. Bro or Woken Matt Hardy, I should say. And together, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt work together for some reason and eliminate Rusev. Huge boos roar throughout the arena. Um, I did not see that coming at all. I didn't really understand why that happened. We'll probably see them at WrestleMania, even though we saw them on Raw 25. After that happened, Matt Hardy and uh, Bray Wyatt go on to eliminate each other, which I thought was pretty weird. And then the freaking buzzer hits, and out comes John Cena. And he's looking strong, you know, coming in, freaking uh, just cleaning house. He didn't throw anybody out, though, but he was looking strong when he finally came in. And he eliminated Elias, obviously, but um, he got jumped. Everybody turned around and everybody was eyeing him. And then they all just gang up on him and just stomp him to the ground. Big pops. Everybody was loving it. And then we had a huge surprise entrant. Out walks the Hurricane Shane Helms. I loved this moment. I thought this was a great moment for Shane Helms. I hope that they bring him in full time for that Cruiserweight division. I would love to see that. I thought that, you know, he was going to have a strong outing. But, you know, John Cena just lays waste to him really, really fast. I did not like that at all. Hopefully, we do get to see him on TV. 
The next participant in the Rumble we had at number 22 was the other half of Rusev Day, and people were going nuts for Rusev Day, man. Freaking Aiden English was getting over so quickly with this Rusev Day, and people were really wanting Aiden English to have a good showing just because of Rusev. Buzzer goes off again, and we have number 23, Adam Cole, which was another huge surprise. Nobody expected Adam Cole to make his debut on the main roster there. I don't think this is going to call him up, obviously. I just think this was a one-off thing. You know, he did get beat by Aleister Black. I highly, highly doubt that they're going to bring him up to the main roster this early, but it was a really cool moment to see him enter. I thought that we were going to have um, a two-sweep by Balor, but I unfortunately did not see it if it happened. Finn Balor lays waste to Aiden English. He gets eliminated. And then um, Buzzer hits again, and we have Randy Orton making his way to the ring. Number 24 there comes to the ring, hits a sick RKO on CN, and, uh, and unfortunately eliminates the NXT champion right there. Even though he had a great showing, I think this really made CN look good. He did a lot of great things while he was in this Rumble match. And then enters Titus Catering. I do not give a crap about Titus O'Neil, nor do I have his figures. But then after Titus, we had The Miz. Of course, you know The Miz had to get in here. And he didn't look as good as I thought he would. I thought he would be one of the final four just because he ended up not being one of them. But then we had um, a really big surprise entrant. Booyaka, booyaka, freaking Rey Mysterio comes out, Brad. I did not expect Rey Mysterio. I knew that it was a rumor, but he looked absolutely incredible. I love the attire that he was wearing. He eliminates the NXT talent, Adam Cole, so I didn't expect that at all. Um, of course, after Rey Mysterio comes out, the favorite to win the Degum thing walks out. The big dog, Roman Reigns, makes his appearance in the Royal Rumble, getting booed out of the freaking building, man. Um, which was well deserved. You know, I really thought for a second that he was going to win. He faced off with Miz. Shield Bomb from Seth and Roman eliminates the Miz there. And he is gone. After that, Roman turns on Seth and eliminates Seth. So, no more Shield just for a quick little um, spot right there. They turn into the Shield and then quickly close on each other. Then, of course, Gold Dust enters the match. Not too much importance, but then the last freaking entrant in the Royal Rumble. Number freaking 30 is Dolph Ziggler, and this really ticked me off, man. I thought he was going to come out, and I thought he was going to just, you know, I don't know, just have a way better showing. It literally was a waste of that entire disappearance. It was horribly booked. It didn't look good. He didn't look good at all. Um, Orton gets eliminated by Roman, and then shortly thereafter, um, Ray is eliminated by Finn, and uh, so is Ziggler. So Ziggler gets eliminated by Finn Balor, and I guess um, Cesaro is also gone at this point, and Goldust is also gone at this point. So we have, we're down to four here. We have Finn Balor, Shinsuke, John Cena, and Roman Reigns, and this went on for a little while until uh, it really pissed me off, man. I don't know why they did this. You know I'm a huge Cena fan, but I also love Finn Balor. And for some reason, they had John Cena eliminate Finn Balor, and I thought that was totally uncalled for. I did Bitch! Not, I did not like that at all. I don't know why they did that. But then Nakamura goes on to eliminate Cena. So we are down to two here. We have Nakamura and the big dog, Roman Reigns. And they're going back and forth, you know. And eventually, of course, Nakamura does win the match, and we are going to be getting... Nakamura versus AJ Styles after the match. He has an interview with Ray, Renee Young, and he declares that he will be taking on AJ Styles. Again, in this match, man, I was just very disappointed with the way Dolph Ziggler handled, was handled. I think the entire disappearance angle was totally wasted. If you were going to do that and have him come back at number 30 in the Rumble, he should have either looked really, really good and not won, or won the Degum thing. And it was just, man... I was hyped throughout the whole thing, waiting on Dolph, and then they totally ruined it with a terribly booked um, angle, and I was just, man, I guess it's cool that Nakamura won. I guess it's better than Roman Reigns, but we are going to be having an epic match between Nakamura and AJ Styles. I apologize in advance if that last segment was all over the place. Guys, I was trying to read my notes while going through the entrance, and I had to scroll back and forth, so if it was sloppy, I do apologize. I tried to get... Um, as much of the match that was interesting as possible. But up next, we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between The Bar, taking on Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. And the crowd was obviously dead for this match. I was dead for this match. Obviously, this was the come-down match. 
Uh, Jason couldn't go because of his head. This is ultimately the finish right here. Jason couldn't go because of his head injury. Seth gets double team. Bar wins. And we have new Raw Tag Team Champions. And I guess this is leading to Seth Rollins versus Jason Jordan. And the trouble is, that would be probably a great match. I just don't know if people are going to care about it because of Jason Jordan's bluntness. Um, he's great in the ring, like I've stated multiple times, but for Seth Rollins going from, you know, uh, money in the bank cash in and winning the WWE title to go into facing Jason Jordan is just, I don't know, man. It just doesn't seem like a very good thing. But we do have new Raw Tag Team Champions in the bar, so we do decrown uh, Seth Rollins and we do decrown Jason Jordan. And I don't know where this thing goes from here, but we have new Tag Team Champions. Up next, guys, we have the Universal Championship match, and I'm going to be real with you. This match was a whole lot better than I was expecting. I was expecting this thing to be just slow and lethargic and just awful, but they were fighting for real out there, man. This was a freaking UFC fight. We had freaking uh, Braun and Brock were just hitting each other for real. Um, it all started when uh, Braun hit Brock with a shotgun drop kick, and Apparently, Brock did not like that because he got up and he popped Braun for real, man. He hit him square in the freaking temple with a jab, and it was such a stiff shot that I was totally shocked that Braun didn't take it out on him. I thought that we were going to have a real fight breakout, and nothing nothing was going to be done because who can separate Brock and Braun from each other? But I loved it, man. It was so intense. Uh, Brock got hit in the face with a knee by Braun. That pissed him off. Um, I believe Kevin Dunn had to mute Brock because he was cursing at Braun, letting him know, hey, bro, you better chill out before you get waxed for real. Um, suplex City to Braun. Braun power slams Brock through a table. Kane very weakly breaks Braun through a table in the corner. It was very weak looking. He like baby shoves him into it. The weight of Braun Strowman broke the table. It was not the force of the push there. F5 to Kane. Braun lifts Brock off of Kane to prevent the pinfall. Braun sets up the announced table, you know, ripping off the cover. Power slams Braun or Brock through the table. Then, um, actually, no, that's not what happened. Uh, he was going to power slam him, but Brock reversed it into an F5. Uh, crashes Strowman through the announced table. Brock proceeds then to tump the announce table onto Strowman. Kane goes for a choke slam on Lesnar through another announce table, but Lesnar reverses that and F5s Kane onto the table. It doesn't even break, but it does collapse. Braun ends up getting up, kicks Brock, and it looks like his skull bounced off the steel steps. It was kind of scary for just a split second. It really looked like he hit his head. Then he threw him back into the ring. Two power slams. I really thought that Braun was going to win it right here after he power slammed him that second time. But, of course, Kane gets in there, hits Braun with a chair. Brock hits Kane with an F5 and wins the matchup. Typical matchup there for Brock, uh, Brock to win going into the Elimination Chamber. Not sure where they go from here. Maybe they'll do an Elimination Chamber to see who fights Brock. I doubt he defends the title in the Chamber. But I'm sure, as you know, the big dog will come out victorious. But this match was a whole lot better than I expected. Very uh, hard hitting, and I enjoyed most of the match, especially the beginning, man, when I thought they were going to break out for real. That stiff shot to Bra Braun Strowman's temple was very scary. Looked very real, and it was just very, very intense overall. Very impressed with what I was going into this match expecting. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we main evented the night with the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. And I was a little bit annoyed by this. Um, I just feel that it's not genuine. I feel that it's forced. I feel like this is a ploy by the WWE just to get their, you know, political agenda and their feminist movement and, like, all this crap pushed um, to the forefront. And I don't think this was genuine at all. I just feel like it was just totally pushed. You know, you had Lita coming out there with her trending hashtag on there um, trying to stir up controversy. I don't know, but... Um, I just thought I'd get that out there. Of course, we had Stephanie McMahon, Charlotte, and Alexa Bliss at ringside for this thing. Um, just going to say that Stephanie McMahon made a lot of stupid comments, but we all knew that coming in. She did do better than I thought. I'm going to be honest. I thought it would be a lot worse. It seemed like she was pretty calm throughout the thing. She did have a few cringy laughs in there. But for the most part, she did do well. I'm not going to do like the Men's Royal Rumble because um, I don't have a lot of these figures. So I'm just going to rattle off. Um, some of the big highlights, of course, Lita did return. She looked great. She had a moonsault on a Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. I thought that was awesome. Kyrie Zayn came out. She looked great as well. Glad to see her in this match. She had two elbow drops that looked fantastic. She got eliminated by Dana Brooke, and I thought that was very, very weird. We had Tori Wilson return, and then she eliminated, eliminated Dana Brooke. I don't know why Dana Brooke had to eliminate Kyrie Zayn, though. 
Sonya Deville comes in, eliminates Tori Wilson. Molly Holly then returns, eliminates Sarah Logan. Michelle McCool comes out, and she looked fantastic. She was all over the place in her camo gear. Eliminates Liv Morgan, Sonya Deville, Molly Holly, even Lana. She was just coming out, just kicking ass, man, just throwing people all over the place. Um, then in came Ruby Riot, and she looked good as well. Vicky Guerrero comes out, and she's just spit, spewing that excuse me trash all over the place. She gets eliminated by Sasha, Becky, Michelle, and Ruby. Then, of course, Miss Money in the Bank enters Carmella. I thought it would have been cool if she just came in and cashed in or something like that. I thought that would have been cool if that happened just to make this thing epic. Um, of course, that did not happen, but um, Vicky smashed Carmella with the briefcase in the head. She finally got herself into the ring. She super kicked everybody when she got in there. And out comes Kelly Kelly. Natalia eliminates Michelle McCool finally after a great performance by her. Naomi looked good when she came in. Very athletic, making a lot of spots in there. Ruby Riot finally eliminates Becky Lynch, which disappointed me a lot, but it is what it is. Um, Jacqueline gets in there. Nia Jax gets in there. Eliminates Jacqueline. Kelly Kelly comes out. Ruby Riot. No, actually, Nia Jax comes out, eliminates Jacqueline, Kelly Kelly, and Ruby Riot. Naomi gets caught by the women, trying to be eliminated by Nia, but then climbs onto the barricade. It was a really cool spot. Then out comes Ember Moon with her arm all wrapped up from NXT TakeOver. Um, Ember Moon was then thrown across the ring by her hair by Nia Jax. It looked brutal. She did like six barrel rolls. Naomi uses a chair to make it to the steps like Kofi Kingston um, to avoid getting eliminated. Then when she gets in the ring, that was so stupid. She gets in the ring and then gets destroyed by Nia Jax. Number 24 comes out. That is Beth Phoenix. She has a stare down with Nia Jax. And then Beth lifts Nia up. And then um, nothing comes of it, but she did lift her up, which was pretty cool. Natalia and Phoenix try to eliminate Nia, but she goes through the middle rope. So that takes out Nia for a while. Natalia and Phoenix hug. Then uh, Natalia slaps Beth and eliminates her, which was very surprising. I was like, you know, face turn and then uh, just right back to heel. So I like that a lot. Here comes the favorite to win this thing, Asuka. She looked amazing. She uh, stared down with Ember Moon. Eventually eliminates Ember Moon. Here comes Mickey James, then Nikki Bella. Carmella mocks Bella, and then Bella eliminates Carmella. Enter Brie Bella. Bailey then gets in there, and then the number 30 spot. I thought for sure that it was going to be Ronda Rousey, and it ended up being Trish Stratus, which was very awesome. I was very happy to not see Rousey in this thing. Um... I'm just very glad. I don't know why. I'm not a big fan of celebrities in my wrestling. If she turns out to be good at wrestling, then that's one thing. But for her to just be thrust into the main event, I don't agree with that at all. I don't give a crap about celebrities in my wrestling. So that is what I feel about that. She hits the double satisfaction on the Bellas, which was cool. Trish and Mickey face off. Everyone eliminates Nia Jax. Sasha takes out Bailey. Then Stratus eliminates Natalia, Trish, Mox Banks, and then goes for the Stratisfaction, but Banks throws her over the top rope, which looked really awesome. I thought that was a cool spot. Um, Sasha and Asuka face off, and then the Bella Twins eliminate Banks. Banks did last the longest in the match. She came out at number one and lasted all the way to the end. Asuka destroys the Bellas. Um, then Nikki turns on Brie and eliminates her. And then finally, Asuka and Nikki out on the uh, apron, and Asuka does kick her to win the match. And, of course, that is the way it should have been. Um, she did look sort of weak in some moments, but overall, she did win the match, so I can agree with that. Um, very happy with Asuka winning. I think that she should go into WrestleMania and win the title, obviously. But then, out of nowhere, some uh, wrestling music hits, and it is Ronda Rousey Piper coming to the ring. I say Piper because she had the leather jacket on. She had her Ronda Rousey Titan Tron up there, and it had the exact font as Roddy Piper. I don't understand if they they didn't have anybody creative enough to come up with something else, but you know, I guess she's Ronda Rousey Piper, but I didn't care. I didn't care that she came out. She looked stupid. She pointed to the sign like three times. She tried to shake Asuka's hand, which I didn't think made any sense really, because Ronda Rousey didn't earn anything. She's just there. Um, the crowd was going high for her, though. I just do not give a crap about her, and I think that Asuka deserved this victory. She's worked her ass off to get to where she is, and for Ronda to just come in and try to take it is just ridiculous, and um, I hope she's good, at least. That's all I'm going to say about it, but I thought that was a very lame debut. She looked weird. She walked around the ring, got to Stephanie McMahon, shook her hand, and then walked off very face-looking, just shaking people's hands and stuff, and that was the close of the show, and that was the complete Royal Rumble. 
Again, I didn't I didn't like the fact that the women main evented. I guess they just wanted that first main event, uh, that first Royal Rumble factor. I don't think they'll main event every single time. I just think this was a one-off thing, but um, I'm not sure what to expect. I'm sure we'll get a woman's elimination chamber, though, so that's probably going to happen. But I'm very happy with the result of this match. Asuka should have won. Uh, if Asuka didn't win, I wanted Becky to win. She had a strong outing, though, but... That is what we're set with. We have Shinsuke and Asuka with the winners. I think those are two deserving winners. Even if I don't agree with Shinsuke, I still think that, um, you know, it's a deserve. I can see that. I think him and AJ will tear the house down. But where do we go from here? I guess we will find out on Monday Night Raw. But that is it for the Royal Rumble, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I, I apologize if it's a little long, and I do apologize if it was a little all over the place, if I'm talking really fast or whatever. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like, leave a comment down below what you thought of the Rumble. Did you enjoy it? I thought it was pretty solid. I think I'd give it a B grade. Um, that is going to do it for this video. Subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.